Hi, my name is Troy Belliston and I own a Techno P2010 turbo diesel. So after seeing this airplane in person, I was very impressed with the Italian styling, the leather interior. This is not the top of the line. No. And yet it has beautiful leather upholstery. And yet it has pretty nice, pretty nice leather upholstery and what a, this is slumming it in Italian terms. Watch this guys, watch this. Italians. It swings open on its own. At what point did Continental decide to buy a Mercedes-Benz engine. And this is an engine that's been around for a while, hasn't it? This motor's been around. Mercedes developed the motor a long time ago. They ran it for millions and millions of miles in their vehicles. Uh, a company called Thieler in Germany started converting it for aircraft use. Diamond Aircraft actually used Thieler motors when they first came out. And Diamond Aircraft created Austro. The Austro diesel motor that's in a Diamond DA40 is a Mercedes motor. They get a Mercedes block directly from the factory. They take off all the automotive components, they put on their components, and they put it in the DA40. In this case, Continental bought Thielert, and now, I talked to the engineers here a couple years ago, and I asked them how much of this motor is still Mercedes or Thielert or, you know, European, and they said, well, you know, it's built in Europe, but it's a, short of maybe the fuel injectors, it's all Continental. We manufacture the whole motor. So it's all Continental at this point, and they manufacture it. There are versions, there's a 135 horse version, 155 horse version, and this is a 170 horse version. It turns out that Continental Engines is all in on this Jet-A piston-powered concept. In fact, this is the CD300. It's a 300 horsepower engine that's planned for aircraft like the Cessna 206 stationaire. What kind of fuel do you get to burn? Jet-A. And it's cheaper in most, most time than 100 low lead. So I also don't have the 100 low lead issues that you, know, you get in some of the places in California where they're trying to ban it. Uh, it's already warm, so we don't need to wait for the uh, the glow plugs. Uh, otherwise, if it was if it was cold, we'd wait for the glow plugs, and we can start the motor. So you don't touch throttle, you don't touch anything. Nope, don't touch anything. Let the computer do it for me. Push the start button, and that's it. Push the start button, and that's it. Yep. <laughs> You know, a little bit different, a little bit more fuel efficient, full fade it controls, let the computer deal with the, uh, with the prop governor and with the uh, mixture control and let the, let the computer do its thing. Smooth, quiet. I like it. I carry 63 gallons full fuel, uh, which theoretically could keep me in the air for about nine hours straight, about five hours longer than my bladder can handle. I typically cruise 10,000 foot at 130 knots, burning 7.1 gallons an hour. It runs pretty good, runs, runs clean and easy and uh, can get a long ways. So what made you go for a, a Techno versus other aircraft? Because you could have gotten more performance for the same money, but you're obviously looking more for I don't know. Technology, what were you looking for? Um, I like the idea of the turbo diesel. I like the idea that it's full FADEC, um, it's one lever. I don't have to monkey with mixtures and uh, uh, prop governors or anything like that. I think I was telling you the other day, you know, I'd never hop in a 1970s truck and uh, 1970s Chevy and, and go from LA to New York, um, but I would a 2020 Chevy. And uh, this here, um, it's, it's, the computer runs everything. It does. I mean, if, if, if the motor so much as farts, I know that, it, that there's a problem. Yeah. Right? 
Uh, what are the redundancies built into this airplane? It's a diesel, right? So it's, it's, it's burning based on compression. So I've got two computers, I've got two alternators. It doesn't have spark plugs, so I don't have to worry about spark plugs. Um, it has glow plugs. If they, if they don't work, you don't start the motor. So it's not something you need while you're running through the air. Um, it's pretty reliable. Uh, like I said, they've put millions and millions of miles on these motors in vehicles and then now they put you know hundreds and hundreds of thousands of flight hours on them and they've been they've been running great so tbo tbo is 1800 hours um that's actually not a tbo it's a tbr time before replacements if there was any concerns that i had it was that they're fairly new to the u.s though they've been in Europe for a long, long time. Uh, Technum is a 70 plus year old company that's been around for a good long time. Have they been building airplanes that long? They have. The owners of Technum started a long time ago working for the Italian military and, and designing and building planes. And, and uh, their they're, they're offsprings and their offspring offspring are now building planes at Technum. One thing that is really convenient is I have a third door. That's nice. Um, and when you're getting gear in and out, uh, that, that really matters. There's plenty of room for a full-size grown man. Yeah. In fact, I'll hop in real quick. You can see I got eight inches in front of my knees, so I'm not feeling cramped at all. So flying with Troy in this airplane, I was really impressed with the smoothness. I mean, the power, it's good. It's good. You can always have more power, but I could feel that turbo kicking in and it definitely was impressive. You could tell that the Italians had a hand in this and that this is their airplane. Absolutely no doubt. I mean, the lines are just as smooth as can be. There's just even where the the windscreen meets the fuselage. It's just smooth, flush. They're going all for looks and they're also going for aerodynamic efficiency. Just really a cool airplane. This intake here is for your radiator. It is water-cooled. It flies pretty solid at 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So just like a car, it has a thermostat. So you never have to worry about overheating, really? Well, you, if you're pushing it really hard on climb out during a hot day, it will get to temperature, but um, the plane is 100% power for five minutes and then you want to back it down to about 90%. And after that, it runs pretty good. It, uh, you don't have too many problems with cooling. And in Southern so, Utah, you've never had overheating issues? I've never, I've had to pull the power back, but I've never had it uh, overheat or get dangerously hot. Okay, what's the so, other inlet for? Uh, the, other, the other inlet is an intercooler. So uh, air comes in, um, goes through a turbo and then comes back up through the intercooler and then is pushed into the intake manifold. Okay, and then there's your oil cooler down at the bottom there? There is a secondary oil cooler down there at the bottom, yes sir. Okay. Keep Empty walking. weight of the airplane is uh, 1798. Uh, full gross is 2660. Fuselage is full carbon fiber. Uh, wings are metal. And the thought process behind that is carbon fiber for the strength on the use of fuselage, but if you get a little bit of hanger rash, it's easy to fix. Knew this will set you out a little bit over six hundred thousand. The the plane itself is cheaper than a new one seventy two, um, or comparable to a one seventy two. I'm getting a little bit better performance than a one seventy two. I'm going to practice a little of my Italian I took in high school. Questo aereo è molto bello. Really is a beautiful airplane. It's kind of like Cessna got together with Ferrari and Mercedes Benz to come up with an airplane. The question is, will that diesel stand the test of time? I want to hear what your comments are. Please be sure and put them below. In the meantime, smash that like, that subscribe button, and I'll catch you soon. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Adios, amigos.